For this example, let's pretend that we have a small, maybe tiny business selling potted plants that we grew in our garden. We'll get our family to help take orders, deliver the plants ourselves to surrounding cities. We've already posted ads online. Let's get our database ready. We have a pretty straightforward products table here. We got the product name, description, and the unit price. Now, since we're selling plants, we need a extra column to let the customers know how to take care of the plants. So let me add a column called care instruction. Let me paste in my plants data. I want to make sure that Excel recognizes this data as a table. So I'm going to select any one of these data cells, go over to the insert tab, click on the table button, and then hit OK. I want to make sure to give this table a name so that I can reference it later. I'm going to call it products. Also give the sheet the same name. In database design, we need a column that can uniquely identify each row. The column is called a primary key. Now we can say that the product name can uniquely identify each row, but typically freeform text is not a good candidate for a key column because something like plant versus plant look the same to a person, but to the computer, they're not the same. So what we usually do is have a numeric column that serves as our primary key column. So let me insert a new column, go back to the home tab, click on the insert button, insert column to the left. We'll call this the product ID. I can start at one, two, and so on, but I like to keep the number of digits consistent. So I'm going to use four digits. I'll start at 1001. Before I fill the rest of the numbers, let me format this table, make it easier to look at. Okay, to fill the rest of the keys, I'm going to select two of these cells, point my cursor at the bottom right of the bottom cell until it turns into a plus sign, and then click and drag. To signify that the product ID is the primary key column, I'm going to highlight the column and then make it bold. Okay, I think we're good with the products table. Let's move on to the customer table. The customer table is pretty straightforward. We got an ID for the customer, their name, their contact information, and where they live. And we'll fill this in when we get our first imaginary order. For the orders, we need two tables. The top table is my order summary table. And the bottom table is my order details table. Let's pretend we're taking an order just to see how the tables work. For the order ID primary key, I'm going to use six digits. And I'm going to start with two, just so I can quickly tell the difference between this one and my product IDs. Today's date. For customer ID, let me jump to the customers tab. Since this is a new customer, I'm going to assign it an ID. I'll start with a three. And also, I'll use five digits for this one. I'm going to use a random number just so the customers don't know that I don't have any customers. Let me paste in the rest of this information. All right, so we have an order from Mia Walker. Let me get the customer ID, go back to my orders tab, paste in my customer ID. In database terms, this is a foreign key column. It's a column that references an ID in another table. I'm going to underline the values to indicate that it's a reference column. Another thing I want to add to this column is validation. I want to make sure that the ID I'm referring to actually exists in the customer table. Before I add the validation, let me come over to the customers table. I'm going to add another customer just to make sure that I can test my uh, formulas. Let me paste in another customer. What I want to do is have the validation rule check the customer ID column. To make this work, I need to give the customer ID range a name. I have the customer ID data selected, and then I'm going up here and giving it a name. I'm calling it primary key customer ID. Now, if I select this name, it should select this range. Go back to my orders tab. I have my customer ID cell selected. I'm going up to the data tab. Click on data validation. 
I want to only allow a list, go down to source. I'm hitting the F3 key. This brings up a list of ranges that I have named, and it shows the name of the range that we just created. Hit OK, hit OK again. We see that a new dropdown has been added. The dropdown shows the IDs from the customer table. Let me create a second order just to test this out. We can see that the new cell also has the data validation applied. Let me add another one. Now what happens if I put an ID that does not exist in the customer table? It's going to give me a validation error. I'm going to cancel. And now I either have to select the customer from the dropdown or type in a valid ID. Let me undo these. We don't need it. Now, just looking at the customer ID, it's a little bit hard to tell which customer I'm serving. It'd be good if I can see the customer name here. So let me insert a new column. Go back to the Home tab. Insert. Insert column to the left. I'll name this customer name. Now we can see that it has the same validation from the column before it. We don't need that. So if that's selected, then go to data, click on validation, change that to any values. To get the customer's name, I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function, equal V, VLOOKUP, I'm going to hit tab. The value to look up is the customer ID comma, the table to look for. I'm going to the customer tab. I'm going to point at the customer table until the arrow turns 45 degrees. I'm clicking once and then I'm clicking two times. So the second click ensures that I'm selecting the whole customer table. Comma again. For the third parameter, it expects the column number of the field that we're expecting. So in the customer's table, to get the first name, we expect the second column. So let me put a two here and then close the VLOOKUP function. Note that the VLOOKUP function expects the first column to be the lookup column. So make sure not to move the customer ID to another column. I'm going to hit enter and it automatically brings me back to the orders tab. Let me get rid of the underline. For this column, I want to make it italic to signify that it is a formula column. Let me make sure the whole column is selected and then hit italic. I want to bring in the last name as well. So I would use the same lookup function, except I would look for column three. In order to combine the first name and the last name, I need to use the concatenate function. Hit tab, make a copy of the fee lookup, comma. Control V to paste, and then I want the third column. Another parentheses to close the concatenate function. Hit enter. Now I have the first name, last name. I just need a space in between. Place my cursor right before the second free lookup. I'll put in double quotes, space, double quotes, another comma, and then enter. Okay, this is what we need. I can't fill the order subtotal until I fill the order details table. So let me go down here. Order detail ID is my primary key. This is not a customer facing ID, so I don't care about formatting the number of digits. I'll just start with number one. Order ID is another foreign key and it references the order ID up here. So just like the customer ID, I'm going to add a data validation to this cell as well. Let me go up to order ID, give this a name. Go down to order ID, data, data validation, list, F3, order ID. Okay, select the order that I'm referencing and I want to make this uh, underlined as well. And then for product ID, it is also a foreign key to the products table. So let me do the same thing really quickly. Select my product ID, give it a name, Go back to orders with my product ID cell selected. Go to data, data validation, list, F3, product ID, hit OK. And here's my product IDs. 
Okay, so let's pretend Mia wants a zebra plant and a Palia friendship plant. So 101, I want to make this a underlined as well. And let's say she wants one of these and she wants the second plant as well. Let's say she wants two of these. So similar to the customer name, I want to bring in the product name. So let me select this cell, go to insert, insert columns to the left, product name. It carried over the validation from the previous cells and let me select it and get rid of it. All right, I'm gonna use the same free lookup function to grab the product name. Look for product ID in the products table. Let's scroll all the way up, point to the top left until we get a 45 degree arrow. Click once, click twice to select the whole table. The third parameter is column two. Close the VLOOKUP, hit enter. There we go. For calculated columns, I'm gonna remove the underline and I'll make it italic. Now for the unit price, I don't want to do a VLOOKUP here because for this order, for this transaction, the unit price should never change. But I don't want to flip back and forth to find the price myself. Why don't I display the unit price along with the product name here? So similar to before, I'm gonna use the concatenate function. Copy the VLOOKUP, paste. I think the unit price is in column five. One, two, three, four, five. Close the concatenate function, hit enter. Let me add a little bit formatting here. In the second parameter of the concatenate function, I'm gonna add a space and then a dollar sign. Close off the double quotes, comma, hit enter. So now I'm just gonna type in $16 here and $19 here. Let me format this to dollar sign. For my line total, it will just be a simple formula with quantity multiplied by the unit price. Now we can calculate the order subtotal. I need to use the sum if function equal sum if hit tab. The range that I'm scanning is the order ID in the order detail table. If it matches my order ID, then I want it to sum the line total. Close the parentheses, hit enter. Let me format this. Now, just to make sure that my formulas work, let me add a new order. It's my second customer, Evelyn. Evelyn wants Let's see what 1003 is. She wants the rattlesnake plant. Also $19. Let's say she wants three of these. Let's add another plant. Swiss cheese plant, $18. Let's do one of these. 57 plus 18 is 75. Looks like our formula is good. Now taxes, we can't forget about taxes. Let me add a new sheet. This is going to be my configuration sheet. I'll just add my tax rate here. Insert tab, make it into a table, make this a percentage. My area is eight and a quarter percent. Let me move the decimal places. I right, go back to my orders and I'll simply reference my tax rate. To make this work, I have to get rid of the add symbol and the extra brackets. The add symbol will try to match up the rows. My first row is okay, 8.25, but my second row will try to reference a second row, which does not exist. So that's why the add symbol didn't work. All right, my tax amount is a simple calculation. Tax rate times order subtotal. And now the order total is a simple addition between the subtotal and the tax amount. Finally, we have the order status. Let me create a new table for that. So for my order status, I'm gonna add data validation. I'm gonna be referencing the status 
let me give this range a name as well now i'm going to add validation to my order status click on data validation list f3 select my status id primary key hit ok new status Okay, our order management database is good to go, but I can think of a few improvements. For example, if I filter for a specific order, it would be nice for my order details table to filter down to that order as well. For my products, maybe I want to do product skews. Maybe something like this. I can charge the customers a little bit more for a bigger plant. It would also be nice to be able to fill a invoice or a sales receipt automatically with the data that we have. So if you're interested in any of those, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.